Item number, SCP-608. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures. SCP-608 is to be held in a vacuum chamber at all times, while not the subject of active research. Magnetic levitation is to be used to suspend the object in the center of the chamber. In the event of either of these measures failing, a Class III evacuation of non-essential personnel is to be undertaken, and containment measures are to be restored as soon as possible. If containment failure persists for more than one hour, a Class IV evacuation of personnel not actively involved in the containment of the item is to be undertaken. In the event of superpressurization for whatever reason, a Class V evacuation and cleanup must be performed immediately. Description SCP-608 appears to be a length of silver tinsel with an unusually furry appearance. Although, depending on environment, the item may be surrounded by a halo of decaying particles. Any object coming into contact with it disintegrates slowly, the process being halted the instant that it is removed. At the same time, the halo increases in intensity. Microscope examination, radar, sonar, MRI, and all other known examination techniques are unable to provide insight beyond the fact that the object appears fuzzy with no readily defined border. Rather, it appears to dissipate into the surroundings. This, combined with the disintegration property, led to the SCP's earlier misclassification as Euclid. Recent investigations have revealed, however, that the item's properties arise from a state, or more simply, its existence as a fractal. In layman's terms, the item has a potentially infinite number of progressively smaller branches radiating off the substance, in such a way that micro-examination and macro-examination produce similar or identical results. The disintegration effects are due to the monofilament and finer branches slicing through a substance at the molecular or atomic level. Discovery SCP-608 originally came to the attention of the Foundation after reports of glowing tinsel in 19... Considered unlikely to be important, the item was nevertheless sought out. Unfortunately, the house in which it was kept at the time collapsed on it for reasons unknown causing large masses to be pressed onto the object. The effect was comparable to a producing an explosive force of tons, as well as considerable quantities of alpha, beta, gamma, and radiation. No survivors were found within of the origin, but the item survived apparently unharmed. Research Potential the research team is currently awaiting permission to attempt firing beams of small particles at the object, in the hopes of discovering more fundamental particles than those currently known. In particular, the ability of the object to baffle lasers has been the source of some speculation, and it is high on the priority list if such research is ever permitted. Addendum 6081 Once the precise nature of the item was determined, it was immediately confined to a vacuum chamber. Attempts were then made to obtain a sample for analysis. Results follow. Date. Expunged. Tool. Steel scissors. Result. Scissor blades were ruined. No visible impact. Date. Expunged. Tool. Vanadium hardened steel saw. Result. Saw blade ruined. No visible impact. Date. Expunged. Tool. 100 kilowatt laser. Result. Halo noticeably intensified. No damage. Date. Expunged. Tool. Table saw with blade composed of SCP. Result. The halo intensified when the tool was brought within approximately one meter. There was a noticeable increase in both alpha and beta particles noted as the tool moved within 500 millimeters. 
Evacuation of non-essential personnel was undertaken before proceeding with the test. After the go-ahead was received, monitoring devices began to cease operation, beginning with the most sensitive. People up to 30 miles away noted unease, likely because of particles. No more data was received after the item came within 100 millimeters of the tool. On later investigation of the site, all organic material was data expunged, along with other large molecules, such as diamonds. It is theorized that the super-dense SCP broke down in a chain reaction at the subatomic level. Attempts are ongoing to recover data from sources not as close to the blast point. Addendum 6082 on 2000 an interference spectrometer was used to attempt to determine its composition. The test results indicate the presence of silver, platinum, and polymers containing super-heavy elements. As yet, no mechanism whereby these substances could be compressed to the width observed in the item has been proposed, although research is ongoing. One suggestion is that only the main body consists of these substances, and the microfibers are another substance entirely. Item Number SCP-609 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures All personnel must conduct Protocol 94 Wegner Gyatso before observing any number of SCP-609-1 to ensure a clear and focused mind. Agents who locate instances of SCP-609-1 are to immediately break visual contact until the object is contained. Update. SCP-609 has been transferred. It is now to be contained in opaque locked bins at Storage Site 32. Because control of SCP-609-1 is highly difficult, due to ironic process theory, only trained researchers with Level 2 clearance and above are permitted to view it for experimental purposes. SCP-609-A is to be secured in Storage Locker 11 at Research Facility 5. Viewing the text of SCP-609-A, in whole or in part, requires permission from the head researcher. Description SCP-609 is a collection of identical green billiard balls in the American pool style which measures 57.15 millimeters in diameter and are believed to exist only as immaterial manifestations of a concept. Instances of SCP-609, designated SCP-609-1, are unbound by physical laws. Each instance is impervious to damage, undetectable except by the naked eye, and unable to conduct heat. Instead, they always feel cold to the touch. SCP-6091 can be manipulated by thought. When a sapient creature is in direct visual contact with SCP-6091, it will emulate the actions the user imagines, including motion, duplication, and instantaneous manifestation at a visualized location. Observers cannot alter the physical appearance of SCP-6091 or erase it from existence. According to the object's documentation, SCP-609-A, as described below, SCP-609 is intended to be a literalistic embodiment of Plato's theory of form. Researchers have conjectured that SCP-609 can be controlled through visualization because SCP-609-1 and the concept of SCP-609-1 are the same object and that SCP-609-1 cannot be damaged or otherwise mutilated because SCP-609-1 is a manifestation of an immutable metaphysical form. If multiple observers attempt to activate SCP-609-1 simultaneously, an additional instance of SCP-609-1 will manifest for each observer. As a result of its thought-activated replication, SCP-609 has proliferated under Foundation custody. See Document 609-A for current estimates. When SCP-609-1 is relocated to, or generated in an area outside of the viewer's visual range, 
A recovery mission is required to resume full containment of SCP-609. Locations from which SCP-609-1 have been recovered include The Research Facility 5 Kitchen The Research Facility 5 Second Floor Bathroom The Apartment of Researcher On Top of a Television A Warehouse in Pasadena Where SCP had been recently located The Set of Television Series Breach occurred during a taping All footage of the event was confiscated and amnestics were administered to all witnesses. The frontal lobe of assistant researcher The mammary tissue of researcher Earth's moon, currently unrecoverable. SCP-609 was recovered with a yellow box, believed to be its packaging. The box is labeled Dr. Wondertainment's Ontological Six Ball, trademark, in large text. Although the typography differs in comparison to other products recovered from the same manufacturer, smaller graphics below the title depict a marble bust of Plato with a speech balloon that says, It really exists! and an unidentified grinning woman exclaiming, Now subject to causality. A green pool ball is visible inside through a cellophane window. The following text is printed on the back Hey, kids! Have you ever wondered whether your experiences are fully authentic, or if only your thoughts are real and the world around you is a web of lies? Now the question is immaterial. With your new ontological six ball, trademark, you can use your imagination to make the hottest new learning toy that cannot not be. It floats. Send it into the air with your thought power. TM. It flies. Did you think it could only float without moving? You should be smarter than that. It can go anywhere. Think real hard of any place fun times can be had. Ontological Six Ball trademark is probably there already. It possesses the highest and most fundamental kind of reality. All other objects which share its form are imperfect reflections of its ultimate truth. Did you create it, or did it? Create you. Don't put Descartes, TM, before the horse. If you don't think this is the grooviest toy out there, Hume must be joking! Caution, some assembly required. Dr. Wondertainment assumes no liability for injuries, accidents, or existential nausea caused by physical or intellectual misuse of ontological six-ball TM. Dr. Wondertainment does not endorse solipsism, and any ominous implications TM that result from the use of ontological six-ball TM are not views shared by Dr. Wondertainment. Ontological Six-Ball TM is not beholden to space-time. Ontological Six-Ball TM cannot be forgotten or unlearned. No copyright date, retail sticker, or other identifying information is present on the packaging. The package was not intended to contain SCP-6091. The object seen through the cellophane window is a paper display insert, designed to simulate a billiard ball. Instead, the object, designated SCP-609-A, is enclosed. SCP-609-A is a cognitohazardous 32-page booklet titled Dr. Wondertainment's Ontological Six-Ball TM Assembly Guide. The first page consists of a disclaimer. Caution! Make sure to read all instructions and warnings before assembling or operating Ontological Six-Ball TM. Inadequate, modified or otherwise improper assembly of Ontological Six-Ball TM may result in undesired functions. If Ontological Six-Ball TM begins to surround you to the exclusion of everything else, making you feel confused, lonely, and like the only thing you can ever be sure of is the Ontological Six-Ball TM, stop playing and take a break. By possessing Ontological Six-Ball TM or any included material, including knowledge of the existence of Ontological Six-Ball TM. You agree to accept all liability for consequences, accidental or metaphysically inherent, of Ontological Six-Ball TM, and also consent that Ontological Six-Ball TM will always be a fundamental part of who you are. Have fun! The remaining pages contain comprehensive instructions on assembling SCP-6091 through careful, directed thought. Printed in six-point type with no illustrations, the booklet describes in exhaustive detail the appearance, construction, 
physical properties and behavior, cultural significance and symbolism, and other aspects of a pool ball made in America circa the 1970s, as related by someone in a state of severe mental distress. Test subjects who read SCP-609-A in its entirety have demonstrated the ability to generate SCP-609-1 through concentration. Although amnestic therapy is ineffective in reversing this effect, it can erase knowledge of the ability from subjects' minds, generally eliminating its use unless the subject is somehow informed or reminded of the ability through, for example, viewing a pool table, a spherical object, the color green, or the number six. Item number SCP-677 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-677 is currently in the vicinity of Saturn's orbit. Due to its attraction to Earth, it is expected to land back on the planet by the year 2000. At least one telescope will be trained on SCP-677 to monitor its movement. When re-entry occurs, a team will be dispatched to recover the object, whereupon it will be dismantled and returned to its storage locker at site. Description SCP-677 is a silver brand pogo stick that has significantly visible wear. Etched onto the side is an engraving reading, For Mike, Happy Travels. SCP-677's frame appears to be indestructible by all normal means, though it can be dismantled. The spring itself, oddly, is easily broken, though it can be replaced with any spring that will fit around the SCP's shaft. The type of spring used appears to have no effect on SCP-677's mechanics, so long as it is unbroken. When used, SCP-677 will immediately jump to unpredictable heights and speeds, regardless of the degree of power applied to the jump. Various heights, ranging from 2 centimeters upwards, have been recorded, and the highest obtained speed to date, based on calculations of SCP-677's current trajectory, is Maximum obtainable speed is unknown. Additionally, due to some unknown mechanic, SCP-677 always lands within meters of its original launch position, regardless of the time, direction, or speed of its trajectory. Note, there was a reason for that warning. Dr. Mentha, recorded after Incident 684-0034-X. Description of Event 684-0034-X With the permission of Agent Personnel 2677 removed SCP-677 from containment and assembled it, claiming that he was, quote, gonna break the world record for extreme pogo, end quote. After donning a parachute and attaching several restraining devices between him and SCP-677, Personnel 2677 began jumping. After eight such jumps of varying heights, SCP-677 immediately shot into the air, breaking its restraints and data expunged. Personnel 2677 was given medical treatment and severely disciplined. Item Number SCP-682 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures SCP-682 must be destroyed as soon as possible. At this time, no means available to SCP teams are capable of destroying SCP-682, only able to cause massive physical damage. SCP-682 should be contained within a 5 meter by 5 meter by 5 meter chamber with 25 centimeter reinforced acid resistant steel plate lining all inside surfaces. The containment chamber should be filled with hydrochloric acid until SCP-682 is submerged and incapacitated. Any attempts of SCP-682 to move, speak, or breach containment should be reacted to quickly and with full force, as called for by the circumstances. Personnel are forbidden to speak to SCP-682 for fear of provoking a rage state. All unauthorized personnel attempting to communicate to SCP-682 will be restrained and removed by force. Due to its frequent attempts at containment breach, difficulty of containment, and incapacitation, 
and high threat of Foundation exposure. SCP-682 is to be contained in sight. The Foundation will use the best of its resources to maintain all land within 50 kilometers clear of human development. Description SCP-682 is a large, vaguely reptile-like creature of unknown origin. It appears to be extremely intelligent and was observed to engage in complex communication with SCP-79 during their limited time of exposure. SCP-682 appears to have a hatred of all life, which has been expressed in several interviews during containment. SCP-682 has always been observed to have extremely high strength, speed, and reflexes, though exact levels vary with its form. SCP-682's physical body grows and changes very quickly, growing or decreasing in size as it consumes or sheds material. SCP-682 gains energy from anything it ingests, organic or inorganic. Digestion seems to be aided by a set of filtering gills inside of SCP-682's nostrils, which are able to remove usable matter from any liquid solution, enabling it to constantly regenerate from the acid it is contained in. SCP-682's regenerative capabilities and resilience are staggering, and SCP-682 has been seen moving and speaking, with its body 87% destroyed or rotted. In case of containment breach, SCP-682 is to be tracked and recaptured by all available mobile task forces, and no teams with fewer than seven members are cleared to engage it. To date, attempted breaches have numbered at 17, while successful breaches have numbered at 6. Addendum 682B Portion of recorded transcript of Begin Log Skip to 0 hours, 21 minutes, 52 seconds. Uh, now, why did you kill those farmers? If you don't talk now, we'll remove you from this attempt and place you back into... Pardon? Uh, speak up. Move the mic up closer. The microphone only has so much gain. Move it closer to it. Don't mess up, man. Look at it. He ain't... Doctor retreats from the room. End log. Addendum 682D. Breaches with SCP-682. So far, there have been six recorded occurrences of attempts at containment breaches by SCP-682. Most Foundation agents and personnel involved in handling these incidents were KIA. Addendum 682E. Termination Options. Log of Event 682E18. Doctor attempts to use SCP-409 on SCP-682. General S, General P, and Doctor observing. 0400. Exposure. SCP-682 began to tear at the point of contact, causing massive trauma to the area. SCP-682 requests several times to know what it has been exposed to. 0800. Crystallization begins, spreading much slower than normal. 1200. SCP-682 shows signs of extreme pain and begins having seizures. 1300. Crystallization stops at 62% conversion. Crystallized area explodes, causing massive physical trauma to SCP-682. 1400. SCP-682 recovers from exposure, despite the loss of limbs and organs. SCP-682 begins regeneration, stating that it will attempt to kill and consume all staff involved in Event 682-E18. SCP-682 appears to now be immune to SCP-409, 
Use of other SCP items to terminate SCP-682 must now first be tested on samples of SCP-682 before full-scale testing. In accordance with Dr. Rand's recommendations, see Document 27B-6. Dr. and Dr. have requested permission to attempt the termination of SCP-682 using SCP-689. The request is currently pending approval from the It has also been suggested by Dr. Gears to use SCP-182 in an attempt to communicate with SCP-682. SCP-182 has expressed reluctance and refuses to enter the containment center of SCP-682, if at all possible. Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.